gonna change your range real Finalists for PC Player of the Year are Alexander Simple Kostilev, Kyle Booger Geersdorf, Luca Perks Perkovic, Peter Yiliang Double Lift Peng, Nikolai Device Reds, Rasmus Caps Winfer, Russell David Twist Van Dulken, Nicholas Pengu Moitsen. Matthew Super Delisi, Jay Sinatra Won, The Pious Mecca Topson Tavitsian, Johan Notel Sunstein. for the eSports Coach of the Year in association with Maikai Copenhagen are James Crowder Eric Adren Hoag Bryce Facento Facento Danny Zonic Sorensen Kim Kakoma Giongun Fabian Grabs Lohman Heart Krusty Dahi Nicholas Ashes Ridgeway Remy XTQZZZ, Taitwin Sokska Merlos, and Packing 10. Finalists for Caster of the Year are Matthew Sadekis Trivet, Indiana Frosker in Black, Clayton Captain Flowers Reigns, Chris Papa Smithy Smith, Christopher Monte Cristo Michaels, Jack Courage Dunlop, Clint Maven Evans, Henry Henry G Greer. Matt, Mr. X Morello. Parsi Aitchison. Mitch Uber Leslie. And Benson.
finalists for the eSports Team of the Year in association with Secret Lab Chairs are Team Liquid G2 eSports E United OG 100 Thieves G2 eSports Reynolds Vitality San Francisco Shock Vancouver Titans Australis T1 and Fun Plus Phoenix Finalists for the eSports Console Player of the Year in association with Scuff Gaming are Damiknik Sonic Fox McLean Brandon Dashi Otel Mohamed Moel Bahakuz James Clayster Eubanks Chris Simp Lair Alexandra K. Dot Corant Gilbert Explosive Rojo Sam Octane Laru Juan Hungrybox Di Baidma Leonardo MK Leo Perez Kenny Kenny Williams and Justin Esports Hardware Provider of the Year Alienware Intel NVIDIA Scuff Gaming HyperX Logitech Razer AMD Asus ROG MSI Astro Gaming Secret Lab Chairs Long days, long flights, but you know, we're here. Hey, we're here. aren't we all like that? That's honestly my schedule nowadays. Is I'm pretty much in the sky the whole time. I mean, that's what it is. But, you Left know. And right, up and down. Absolutely, and we're in Texas now. What brings you to Texas? Um, you invited me and you forgot that. <laughs> So sorry. No, I'm just kidding. They, uh, it's uh, this whole eSports Awards thing. They got me doing like, uh, you know, I'm like your, your like 
second in command, your sidekick for the weekend. So, I like that, uh, yeah. F.Sidekick. Yeah, there it is. Okay, awesome. Important. I need to come up with a superhero name or something. You're gonna have to help me, Cody. I'm gonna finish makeup and then I'm gonna take you around and show you show you where the awards are gonna be. That sounds good. Lottie Von Prague sounds more like a nemesis evil mastermind name, so stick with that. Superhero for the foot. You'll find out how evil I am a bit later on, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Arlington, Texas. I'm here once again for the eSports Awards 2019 Go Home Show. That's because in a mere three weeks, myself and my friends are gonna be hosting the awards on that beautiful stage you see back there. We have so much to get through in this incredible show, but already so much has happened this year. So let's take a little recap right now, already on our eSports Awards of 2019. We are here in the Arcade Club in Manchester Berry. I am standing in the beautiful and sunny Arlington, Texas. Hello and welcome to the Esports Awards third Spotlight Show for November. Hello and welcome to the fourth Esports Awards Spotlight Show of 2019. And they wouldn't book me a private jet. Our awards are going to be split into three different groups. Yep, it's going to be community, industry and pro. Feel the weight of that paper. Oh yeah! venue announcement of where the 2019 eSports Awards will be. Lights. Camera. Action. Much better. Perfect. Our after party, which we've been dubbed the best after party I mean, sports. they are amazing, by the way, just saying. Anybody flying in here is going to have a blast and an easy, easy day of travel. Mark my words. This one is beautiful, by the way. It is, right? Look, I'm not going to make an excuse, but this is broken. Just go. I don't want to talk about it. Obviously, none of them are doing my tactic of hiding in the bathtub, pointing at the window. The ladies love it when I finish second or something, something along those lines. Which, by the way, if you look up the term and you end on the internet, there's also some a little Easter egg and a little bit of useful advice for people in the world. Now, somebody get me my chaps. How much did they tell you? <laughs> no, no. We need to start talking about mental health. What we've done is we've moved all voting and nominations right back to the last possible moment. Welcome to Scuff Headquarters. So, so for the next part of this tour, I didn't expect to be a thumbstick in a controller. Hi, it's me taking Lottie's job. Let's take a look at the final. And those are our esports. These are our esports PC Rookie of the Year finalists. Hey everybody, Tommy T. Dryne here, and welcome to the Esports Awards Play of the Month. <laughs> Yay, pretty we did it. You're pretty close. I'm keeping this one for myself. All right. F dot. Yeah. Do not look. I think this is kind of dumb. Your life depends on this, okay? That is... Your life depends on this. That's probably oh, accurate. Oh, there's a poll. Yep, yeah. There, yeah, there definitely is one. I got you, don't You worry. weren't kidding. There was actually a poll, Lottie. <laughs> That's not a lie. Can okay. I look yet? No, no. Can I look keep, yet? Keep your eyes shut. Are we there yet? No, we're not. Are we there yet? Uh, no. It's been 35 minutes, Lottie. How long are we going to walk here? You're a slow walker. Listen, I'm walking here. That's just for a friend. I really don't actually say that, I swear. OK, we're not either. I'm just going to take you to okay. the middle so you can get the full effect of how The middle. Don't Shout out is. to Jimmy Eat World. All right. <laughs> Tommy, are you ready? I, I mean, you've built this up for so long. I'm so ready. Okay, open your eyes. Uh, it's like a 
VFW? I think I, this looks like a bowling alley. I, I mean. I'm kidding, turn around. Oh, we're, oh, word. Oh, word. <laughs> that's word, yo, that's, that's dope. Okay, sick, yeah, I'm ready for this show. I think, I think we can crush it. This is gonna be dope, this looks sick, I'm here for it, uh, it looks, yeah, it looks better than that. I'm it, good. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, this looks dope. Hell yeah. also known to many friends around the world as FDOT. Lovely to have you. We've had our amazing reveal of this gorgeous stage behind yeah. us. What did you think? I mean, well, you got, it was on camera. You saw exactly what I thought. I thought it was really cool and good. Mind-blowing? Yeah, it was, no, seriously, it's, uh, it's insane. I was really excited for it, and uh, it, I had an expectation, and it yeah. was like, here, so. Definitely, definitely some cool stuff. I'm glad. I mean, it's a huge step up from last year's awards as well. And considering we've changed country as well, we've moved all the way out here to the USA, Arlington, Texas. Mm -hmm. And to have something of this caliber behind us is, is going to be massive. And I cannot wait for the actual night now. But the last time I saw you was in Atlanta at yes. the Scuff Gaming facility, and that was awesome. I've just got to, I've just got to ask you, you know. Why were you so bad at creating a controller? Uh, because, wow, we're just gonna come out <laughs> swinging. Um, I've uh, got a PC excuse, that's it. I've been using PCs for a long time. Uh, don't let anybody know that I have an Xbox and a PlayStation at home. I'm gonna blame it on being a PC guy. That's okay, it, well, that's our official answer. A, a few more excuses, and let's have a little look now at the recap of our finalists of this year. The eSports Personality of the Year in association with Arlington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Finalists are Nade Shot, Shocks, Golden Boy, Dr. Lupo, Fallen, Steve Aronset, Courage, Ninja. Ocelot and Hector Rodriguez, the finalists for Content Creator of the Year in association with Esports Stadium Arlington are Courage, Up Up Down Down, Ali A, Laser Beam, Duncan Thorin Shields, Sunless Khan, Faze Jev. Brian Terrorizer Hamby, Craig Mini Lad Thompson, Travis Gafford, and Nade Shot. The Esports Videographer of the Year finalists are Matt Morcho Reyes, Corey Doggett, Sean Dew, Gabriel Ruiz, Joannes Lenner, Damian Estrada, Optic Roger, Max Olivo, Charles Dalton, and Logan Dodson. The Esports Photographer of the Year finalists are Helena Christiansen, Nuno Miranda, Joe Brady, Yao Ferrara, Kirill Bashkirov, Rich Locke, Peter Char, Michael Conkle, 
Stephanie Vixani Lindgren. The eSports Breakthrough Game of the Year finalists are Apex Legends, Super Smash Bros Ultimate, NBA 2K19, Old School RuneScape, PUBG Mobile, Brawl Stars, Italian 1944, FIFA 19, Guns of Boom, Magic the Gathering Arena. The Esports Cosplayer of the Year finalists are Sneaky, Jessica Nigri, Maul, Kitty Kaboom, Little Gem, Spoon Makes, Annihilic, Willow Creative, Kinpatsu Cosplay, Yaya Han, Polygon Forge, the Streamer of the Year in association with Arlington Convention and Visitors Bureau finalists are Shroud, Tfue, Ninja, Courage, Nick Merckx, Dr. Disrespect, Tim the Tapman, Alan Zoka, Otaga, Pokemon. So there we have it, our community awards recap there, and many worthy finalists amongst mm -hmm. them as well. Let's just talk about the first one I've got on my mind, Streamer of the Year. Sure. Now, so many big names, and so many names that have made such a dent in the industry this year as well. I mean, let's just talk about Ninja uh, from the get-go. I mean, he has got to be a top contender in this category. Ninja's always in the conversation when talking about Streamer, um, and it's very funny watching communities get mad about Ninja and eSports stuff because he's an entertainer but streamer this is category uh, something interesting that I give him a lot of props for from more of an industry side less of a fan side is the jump to mixer switching platforms getting paid for like getting uh, broadcasting rights payment that is a giant step forward when you look at traditional broadcasting that's how people pay the bills right now people we're in the wild west still of esports and streaming ninja made a move business wise that really impresses me maybe less scary because he's Ninja and he's yeah. not going to lose it. But I think the move forward to go to broadcasting rights revolutionized how stream streamers kind of look at what they do and how people look at what streamers do. And so Ninja, as far as him being an entertainer, is cool. And him now on the business side, it's a big picture uh, kind of conversation. Absolutely. But I love a lot what Ninja did this year. 100% really put Mixer on that board as well. I mean, it was, it was difficult with Twitch making such a huge impact mm -hmm. in all streamers' lives and as their careers go on. But then Mixer now coming in as well, mixing it up. Up. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and talking about mixing it up, we've also got Dr. Disrespect as mm -hmm. well in there too. Now, he obviously won our 2017 award. Do you think he has a chance this year? Uh, he, he'll, always, he'll always have a chance, I think. Dr. Disrespect coming through, again, revolutionizing what it is a streamer does. We've had character streamers before, but he kind of like leads that area right now. Also just fun to watch. The, the doc has a brand. He might not be top of the crop right now. Um, I think that he's possible there. You also got to look at people like Shroud. Shroud crushes it for the competitive side. I always talk about people have different reasons to watch streamers. Well, if you're that guy that wants to watch somebody crush it all the time, you're watching Shroud. Oh, yeah. You're watching whatever he's playing because that's what, you know, he's going to be super competitive. And I got to give a shout out to my girl Pokimane, crushing the merch world. Like, people that don't, be, I, it's at the point where people that don't know her like her brand, and that's, again, I'm looking at the bigger aspect of streaming, Ninja, etc. What Pokey's doing with merch is really a dunk. 100%. There's so many, so many good names in there, so it'll be really exciting to see who takes that yeah. community award away with them. Let's move on to eSports Breakthrough Game of the Year. Now, we've all known that Apex Legends has been yeah. amongst one of many breakthrough games here this year as well. Is that one the one to beat at the moment, or is there other franchise titles do you think that are really going to take this one home? 
that's the game to beat. Apex has set the bar and jumped over it that they've set themselves, right? And it was interesting watching them slow roll it. They were like, here's a game. And everybody's like, all right, every game patches every 30 seconds. Where's that? <laughs> nah, we're chilling. And then, bang, new characters, bang. So it was really kind of a big deal the way they slow rolled it. It was cute. I'm here for it. And I think they definitely kind of have set the bar. There's a couple of other games that have been doing things as well, though. I think Magic Arena, I'm a big Magic nerd, surprise. Uh, <laughs> Magic Arena has done something, this game's out for 25 years, and they've largely ignored the esports world. And this past, like, two and a half years, we've seen a ramp up from the, from the cards, the actual implication to Arena. And so revolutionizing a tabletop game that you, you know, play in a musty comic book store into this, like, global phenomenon was really, digitals particularly, was really, really big for me, for sure. And uh, last mention, if I can squeeze one yeah, in. Go on, squeeze it in. Brawl Stars. Have you played yet? No, I haven't. Brawl I Stars, haven't. Golden Boy tuned me in a couple of, uh, maybe last year, when we were working some event, and he was like, oh, you gotta check out this mobile game. I'm not a mobile gamer. I, I'm a PC guy all day, every day. Brawl Stars has stolen my heart. When I'm sitting anywhere, it's it's just enough intricacy to like have a breakdown and understand a game but it's still like chilling, I'm at the airport going at it. Yeah. So like, I think, and there's a competitive scene, they have a world championship in Korea coming up in November. There's a big deal, I think, for mobile esports, Brawl Stars is kind of setting a new tone as well. So uh, shout out to the card game world, shout out to the mobile world, but I absolutely think Apex kind of came out, stomped in a footstep, set a bar, jumped over it, and then some, for sure. Absolutely, we'll see if that, that EA title will take it this yeah, year so. or not. We'll have to wait and see. Now, moving on to Content Creator of the Year. Again, a very similar one to mm -hmm. Streamer of the Year, although it's bringing in kind of everything that an individual or brand <laughs> does to create content for their fans and it's not just streaming it could be YouTube it could be it could be anything whatever platform you decide to go on now I mean a couple of names here we've got Nade Shot Courage um, WWE superstar Xavier Woods I mean some very notable characters here as well now do you think that there'll be a new day that will arrive where somebody like Xavier Woods could grab that mic and take that trophy I mean absolutely you, you talk about up up down down right now and I think that's Content creator is different from streamer. And I'm very happy you exactly. made that mm -hmm. uh, that distinction because, yeah, I, th I think he absolutely could come out here and you know bring the trombone and steal the trophy. That's the type of guy. <laughs> that's the type of energy. That's the type of atmosphere that you're looking for when you're talking about content creators. You know, you give a shout out to obviously I have sort of a side to like the Thorins of the world, yes. right? Give you my esports news. That's kind of what I'm looking at. And then you've got Courage, who's kind of doing this like little little bit of both type world. And I respect that. I think a lot of what goes on in esports is like spinning multiple plates and trying mm -hmm. to do multiple things at well, a time. It's smart if you're streaming at the time and you have some fantastic clips or yeah. you have something particular, a message that you want to show people, cut it up, put it on content. Yeah. It, it's smart and it's 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 usable. So I mean, he even uh, you know he even cast it right. He came to Queens and casted the Fortnite World Cup. So I mean, that's. I think I really respect what content, what Courage is doing as a content creator because, like I said, I use the the analogy spinning multiple plates. Like yeah. that, you're up there and you're like, Pfft, all right, I'm streaming and Pfft, I got my YouTube career and I'm casting, right? Like yeah. that's important. And so, you know, I think when you're looking at content creator of the year, you're looking at quality for sure, but also what else are you doing? Are you just in your little hovel making a video once a month? No, I want to see you really involved. That's why I love what we see out of the wrestling world. That's why I love what we see out of Courage and people like that for sure. Hundred percent agree any more esports personality of the year who is taking this award home who uh, is your bet? i have a note here not lottie von prague <laughs> don't um, worry i'm not in it anyway spoiler <laughs> alert someday maybe maybe we'll we'll see. i don't know if my personality is that good i would vote for you <laughs> if you paid me enough real talk though personality of the year uh again i'm i'm bringing up Curtis's name a lot i think he has been crushing it it's interesting because we watched his kind of rookie season last year uh I'm gonna stop casting, I'm just gonna be a content creator. And now this year he's making moves with Ariana Grande. He's traveling the world, like that's real big deal. And personality, yeah, you're gonna work with a famous pop star, that's personality for me. I look at some of these other names and Ninja's obviously been doing stuff like that. It's like low, less low to the ground courage when he does his stuff kind of just seems real natural and 
personality. You know, that's yeah. that's where I'm, I'm, I'm digging well, deep into that word personality. He does. He has a very big personality. Yeah. I think that's why people fell in love with him back in the Call of Duty casting days for him as well, because, you know, him and Maven together, he just mm -hmm. had such a good time watching them. Yeah, he's always, you know, there's a lot of different ways to commentate. That's kind of my day job. And one of the, one of my goals as a commentator is I want it to seem like you can just sit in the seat and watch the game with me. And that's what kind yeah. of courage brings. Golden Boy brings the same type of attitude. You want to talk about breaking down barriers. We're just talking about Xavier Woods. GB's doing AEW and doing some wrestling stuff on his world. So I think those are big steps. But Dr. Lupo also gets a big mention from me. He's got a unique audience and he's a unique type of person. Kind of like this open, anybody can come through. And I think that's real important in the world 100%. of esports. That's, you know. He's done such an incredible job with charity this that's, year as that's well. What yeah. And honestly, a heartbreaking mm -hmm. stories that have come through. And he he's not afraid to voice them either and to shed light on that. You know, not, not everybody wants to talk about difficult things in the world, but let's yeah. be honest, it needs to be shed. So Absolutely. And, and I, I, yeah, I give a lot of credit to, to Lupo there, so for sure. So I think, uh, you know, it depends on, this is very much one where you vote with your heart, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're sitting there like, well, best player, I'm going to break down the stance, vote with my brain or my calculator. You're voting with your heart here. I think Lupo gains a lot of votes. I think Golden Boy earns a lot of votes. Courage, this one is real open-ended. 100%. Well, we're going to move on now because back in August, the wonderful Thorin and Brycey were there to reveal our industry finalists. So let's take a recap right now. Esports Game of the Year. CSGO. League of Legends. Fortnite. Overwatch. Dota 2. Call of Duty Black Ops 4. PUBG. Rainbow Six Siege. Rocket League. Street Fighter V. Esports coverage website of the year in association with Sizzle Creative. VP Esports. Gosu Gamers. Dot Esports. Inven Global. The Score Esports. The Esports Observer. Liquipedia. HLTV. Deserto. ESPN Esports. Esports Journalist of the Year. Jacob Wolf. Emily Ramp. Richard Lewis. Ashley Kang. Dustin Steiner. Kevin Aiello. Tyler Fionfire Erzberger. Antonio Injustificado Uste. Duncan Thorin Shields. Jerick DK Lewis. Esports Publisher of the Year. Activision Blizzard. Riot Games. Valve. Epic Games. Ubisoft. PUBG Corporation. Tencent. EA. Supercell. Capcom. Esports Commercial Partner of the Year. Intel. State Farm. HyperX. Red Bull. G Fuel. DHL. Alienware. Scuff Gaming. Logitech. AT&T. The Esports Supporting Agency of the Year. Character Select Agency. Code Red Esports. ESG Law. Evolve Talent. Loaded. Hitmarker Jobs. National Association of Collegiate Esports. Freaks for You Gaming. The Esports Hardware Provider of the Year. Alienware. Intel. NVIDIA. Scuff Gaming. 
HyperX, Logitech, Razer, AMD, Asus ROG, MSI, Astro Gaming, Secret Lab Chairs, so there we have it, the industry category. Some of the biggest esports in the world, some of the biggest companies in esports in the world. Renowned journalists, coverage websites, it's full of it all. Now let's just quickly talk about, I would say, the award that is probably most fiercely debated okay. at the esports awards, esports game of the year. Now, this is a huge award. Yeah. I mean, CSGO has taken it home twice. We've got Overwatch, who won it last year. I mean, there's so many titles that you can consider here, so many different titles, and it's always so hard to pick one. And I think everybody gets very frustrated. I think sure. their, their game that they love hasn't won it. <laughs> but there's many, many different reasons for why a game should win Game of the Year. For you, what titles are kind of coming out of the woodworks here? Um, it, for eSports Game of the Year, I think it's less about coming out of the woodwork and more just like I'm seeing the guys that have stood tall here. You know, like League of Legends and everybody, it, it, that's who's nominated here. And who wins is, again, uh, over the past year, what have I been most entertained by, I think. Uh, straight up, New York XL didn't win Overwatch League, so they can't win this. It's just that simple. New York's got to win. That's how it works. Outside of it, uh, how do you say no to Counter-Strike? I mean, Counter-Strike continues to be dominant. It's fun to watch. It's been fun to watch. I mean, I... Counter-Strike is immediately where I go to when I start talking esports to non-initiated people. I always go, look, you know, my, my dad gave me a baseball when I was a kid. Now you've got people giving their kids mice and keyboards to go play Dust because Counter-Strike's been around for 20 years, you know? And watch it, it's still successful. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool right now in the CSGO scene because you've got this kind of shift the past one or two years where all of the old squad, we saw like Forrest and a lot of these like 1-6 kind of legends still maintaining control. Now you got like Vitality stepping in and some new names rocking out. And I think it's, it's a revitalization of the Counter-Strike scene that has never really died down. And you've also got, I mean, CSGO filling out music concert sized arenas. Mm -hmm. that's, that's huge in itself, and the way that they put on a show is insane. I mean, it's great. The game, it, it's, it's great because I think people have chased the esports dream of Counter-Strike for so long in that it accidentally nailed a perfect broadcasting. Oh, so the, there's a halftime that we can like run a commercial in? Oh, there's a timeout or a break between matches? I mean, broadcasters are sitting there like, yeah, awesome. You know, trying to pause a 50-minute MOBA game doesn't happen for you to show your ads. So Counter-Strike works for the industry people on this side. Counter-Strike works for me as a super fan looking at the difference in economy in round six to seven, and it works for the casual fans. It's like, oh, that guy killed four dudes and they won the round, that's sick. And I think that, you know, that when you're talking about esports game of the year, everybody, making everybody happy is impossible. Counter-Strike kind of nails that. 100%, now talking about nailing it, journalists always seem to nail the best stories coming through in our esports industry. Mm. Now obviously Thorin taking away the award in 2017 had a fantastic speech. It was wonderful to hear from him live in the room. And then of course Jacob Wolf with an impassioned speech as well last year. Yep. Which names on this final list category do you think stand out to you? Uh, it's interesting, Fionn on Fire is mm -hmm. where I go here. And I think a lot of people, there are, there are more prominent folks, I think, out there. Um, but at the end of the day, I still on the timeline, interesting esports information, whether it's a full-fledged article or just a couple of tweets here and there, they nail it. They absolutely kind of bring that sort of information that I want to get all the time. Thorne does what he does very, very well, and Jacob was excellent to kind of see the initiation into traditional you know, esports. Him and Darren at, at ESPN kind of have kind of nailed that sort of like... Uh, you know, how you say the segue into it. It's literally my job to do segues. Um, but when I see, it's more ground level, like I was talking about before, more like in the trenches of esports yeah. for Fion. And so like, that's the type of guy, that's the type of person that I'm like tuning into, checking out and constantly going, yo, you check out this tweet? You know, man, you see, you, you see this article? And if that's what I'm doing, 
I mean, that's the winner, right? Absolutely. Well, let's be honest, you couldn't check out tweets if you didn't have a bit of hardware. And our next category is hardware provider. It also Great segue. For a living too. So, um, of course, this is a category I feel sometimes can go unnoticed in our industry. Sure. And which is why we do bring that to attention here at the Esports Awards. There's so much to talk about in terms of hardware because this is the world we live in. Mm -hmm. It's not possible to do what we do and what the players do without it. Now, keeping that in mind, Tell me why it is so vital that we do recognize these guys. I mean, simply just because of the amount of money they put into the into what we do. I mean, every anytime we host, it's, hey, I'm hosting eSports event sponsored by Logitech here with name brand Razer on the side and Intel NVIDIA doing what they can for us on the outside. Back to you at the Alienware analyst. That, like, that's what we do for a living. So <laughs> obviously... Every single pretty much finalist in that <laughs> round of applause MSI and Astro Gaming also involved. But so, like, that's what, you know, that's the lifeblood of what we do right now, and obviously the fans will, will take part, but to be in a, a great arena like this and you know we've been around doing different events you know when you look at the giant music stadiums that counter straight all of that comes from these people and then also on the less industry side uh the players have to use good stuff you know you look at hockey and you've got steel sticks and that's a it's it's all about what you bring your peripherals are important 100 percent, it is most certainly very important and remember you guys at home actually have a chance to go and vote for your favorites so go and head over to the website www.esportsawards.com and cast your vote now what are you waiting for if you haven't done it we're gonna go do it as well aren't we again are we yes like right now have you voted yes <laughs> <laughs> you need to. I have, please. I already, I'm, I'm I already dead, have. I'm, de I'm dead. I have. Don't tell her. Well, of course, we have another category okay. that we need to go through as yep. well, which is our pro categories. And yourself, myself, and Scuff Dunk have yeah. the pleasure of going over those back in Atlanta. So let's take a quick look. The finalists for the Esports Coach of the Year in association with Mikey Copenhagen are James Crowder, Eric Adren Hoag. Bryce Facento Facento, Danny Zonic Sorensen, Kim Kakoma Giongun, Fabian Grabs Lohman, Park Krusty Dahi, Nicholas Ashes Ridgeway, Remy XTQZZZ, Taitwin Sokska Merlos, and Packing Ten. The finalists for Host of the Year are. Alex Goldenboy Mendez, Alex Machine Richardson, Ifia Shocks de Bortira, Paul Red Eye Challoner, Frankie Ward, James Dash Patterson, Nevi Estefan, Chris Puckett, Trez Stunner Saranthus, and Katie Bedford. The finalists for Caster of the Year are Matthew Sadekis Trivet, Indiana Frosker and Black, Clayton Captain Flowers Reigns, Chris Papa Smithy Smith, Christopher Monte Cristo Michaels, Jack Courage Dunlop, Clint Maven Evans, Henry Henry G Greer. Matt, Mr. X Morello. Carsey Aitchison. Mitch Uber Leslie. Anne Benson. The finalists for the eSports Console Rookie of the Year in association with Scuff Gaming are Chris Simp Blair. Leonardo MK Leo Perez. Mohamed Moalba Harkuz. Dylan Envoy Hannon. Aiden Aiden Conrad, Tyler ABZ Farris, MacArthur Celium Jovell, Gavin Tweak Dempsey, Dylan Dylan Henderson, Kyle Scrub Killer Robertson. The finalists for the Esports Console Player of the Year in association with Scuff Gaming are Damiknik Sonic Fox McLean, Brandon Dashi Otel. Mohamed Moal Bahakuz, James Clayster Eubanks, Chris Simp Lair, Alexandra K. Dob Corant, 
Ilba Explosive Rojo. Sam Octane Laru. Juan Hungrybox Di Baidma. Leonardo MK Leo Perez. Kenny Kenny Williams. And Justin. The finalists for Esports PC Rookie of the Year are Kyle Buga Geersdorf. Matthew Zaiwu Herbert. Tim Nemesis Leipovzek. Jiong Nen Yong Kwan. David Aqua W. Emil Nyrox Bergquest. Dan. And Jer Sergej Salo. The finalists for PC Player of the Year are Alexander Simple Kostilev. Kyle Buga Geersdorf. Luca Perks Perkovic. Peter Yiliang Double Lift Peng. Nikolai Device Reds. Rasmus Caps Winfer. Russell David Twist Van Dulken. Nicholas Pengu Moitsen. Matthew Super Delisi. Jay Sinatra Won. Tapias Mecca Topsen Tavitsian. Johan Notel Sunstein. The finalists for the Esports Team of the Year in association with Secret Lab Chairs are Team Liquid, G2 Esports, E United, OG, 100 Thieves, G2 Esports, Renault Vitality, San Francisco Shock. Vancouver Titans. Australis. T1. And Fun Plus Phoenix. The finalists for Esports Organization of the Year are Team Liquid. G2 Esports. Cloud9. 100 Thieves. Fnatic. Team Vitality, NRG, and E United. So there we have it, our pro categories, the final categories. It's going That's to where be, I, come in. I know it is, isn't it? Um, I mean, we discussed this, of course, not that long ago, and we're just going to have a quick recap here, but let's just start with Esports Console Player of the Year. Now, this one is going to be difficult because we need to address Rocket League here and the uncertainty about that. Now, I have some vital notes here from the panel. Uh -oh. So, when the panel voted on this one, it was ruled that the game should be interpreted and considered based on the primary input device used to play it rather than the machine. So, given the majority of Rocket League players use controllers, they were banded as console players. It's always difficult in these situations because many titles and PC actually are superior frame rates yeah, to, yeah. you know, on broadcast because it's easier for the tournament. So, I mean, it's been a little bit difficult because it's still wanting to build a console game, but yeah, I mean, we're having a bit of issue with it. Yeah, you, you great job on the spiel that you Thanks. had to say. I, listen, console, it's it's better to play Rocket League with, with a controller. Uh, they play on PCs. I mean, I love the Rocket League community. Shout out to Leaf and Gillyweed. Those are two of my closer friends. Yeah, you're playing with a controller, man. So you fit here. That's what works out. I mean, fighting game players can play with a Guitar Hero controller. You know, for me, it's input. Yeah, I'm there, too. As far as Esports Player of the Year, yeah, Rocket League had some pretty cool people here. I'm only here to talk about Sonic Fox. They have nailed their game. They have nailed the community aspect. They have nailed kind of everything outside of it. They have nailed... Not everybody wants to be a role model. Yeah. They automatically are, and they're willing to accept it and run with it. Sonic Fox, one of my favorite people on the planet, esports or otherwise. So if there's a spot where Sonic Fox is going to be nominated, they're who I'm looking at for sure. Well, you know how we mentioned voting literally earlier on just now? Mm-hmm. You know what to do? The, Sonic Fox. I've voted for Sonic Fox, and that's it. <laughs> In every category. <laughs> it came back saying he's not nominated. It's a tough. 
<laughs> Whatever. Yeah. He is now. There it is. <laughs> uh, let's move on to eSports PC Player of the Year. Now, this is one of the hardest categories to yeah. call um, <clears throat> because there's so many deserving people as a finalist here as well. So are there any names right now that are jumping out to you that you, you feel like, you know, really that could be a toss-up between? Yeah, I mean, like I said last time around, a lot of different names here. We look at what happened with the Fortnite World Cup. I think that's more of a one-shot, right? I'm there for the party. I don't know if that's where I'm leaning toward with, like, eSports Player of the Year PC style. You know, uh, around... It's tough. I mean, this is one where I was very happy to say, Sonic Fox, Final Answer, Double Down. This one, I'm like, please don't look at me because a lot of players on this list are um, kind of really worth worthy. it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got Simple from one side, you got Double Lift on the other. Very different games, still maintaining control after long careers and still being able to put up, I think is impressive for sure. So you got two names out of me, and that's where I'm going. Absolutely. <laughs> and another important person that we do find in teams is, of course, the coach. Mm -hmm. So we've got eSports Coach of the Year. Uh, now, bearing in mind, these guys actually do a lot behind the scenes for, yeah. for the top teams in, in the industry, and a lot rides on their shoulders. They, they need to be able to coach these guys into victory, and, you know, it's an emotional ride for them too. And we have a lot of notable names on this list as well, um, mm -hmm. across console and PC. Who do you think is going to be walking away with that award this year? It's tough. I remember last time in, Aust in, in Australia, in uh, in Atlanta, I mentioned Astralis's coach, and I'm not sure if he's going to win. That's where my heart lies. It's, you know, old school counter strike again. Um, it, there's a lot of names on here. Really, I want to go top level and talk, you know, what it is to, to be that esports coach again. I work daily, um, I, I work a daily league, Smite Pro League, and we watch the coaches. A lot of people just think, oh, they do picks and bans or, or, or map decisions or whatnot. It's much more high level than that. There's a lot of spreadsheets involved. And also just the, the sports is X percent mental. Yeah, when you're playing a five game series and you drop two maps, the coach is the one that comes in there and goes, hey, you're not that bad. We can win this one, Absolutely. reverse sweep our way, and don't discount that. I can't tell you how many fans come through and go, well, they're not the ones pushing the buttons. You can say whatever you want in the locker room. False. It is so <laughs> important watching a player get tilted because they've been, they're going 0 5 and 1, 0 6 and 2. Coach comes in, gives them the pep talk like Friday Night Light style, and then they go out, reverse sweep. That player is hitting 20 kills in the next match. That's the important side. So don't underestimate what a coach brings. Don't just randomly click on this one. These guys are as much a part of the team as every player. That's, that's the biggest deal for me here with this category. Absolutely. And now, finally, to talk about eSports Caster of the Year. These are the narrators of the games, guys. Everybody that you're watching, you're listening to them in your ears to understand what is happening on your screen. Mm -hmm. Very important to our industry, as is Absolutely. everybody here. But eSports Caster of the Year, there's so many, so many names on there that you could honestly be like, you know, super deserving of taking this award away. Yeah. And of course, we've had some, some incredible names already go through the ranks of our eSports every year. Talk to me about some of your favorites and why. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I got I got to look at the card because this is one where I go, oh, everybody on this list is is kind of worth it. Again, like I said last time, I'm looking at Frost. I, anytime you're able to kind of carve your own way, super respect. Um, she just got back from the Louis Vuitton show. Like that's another groundbreaking. That's so sick. I'm here for it. Take me with you next time. But like me that's too. the type of stuff that you're you're looking for inside what she does, outside of what she does. You know, I, I, I love what goes on there. Captain Flowers have has brought kind of a new sort of fresh look into what he does in his games and so I think that he gets a shout out there but uh, yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean towards Frost as always I think she's just got an edge she's got a style and uh, clearly that's kind of where I'm at too so I, I like, like it. that I like it a lot yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing her walk away with an award this I'm, year I'm, that, I'm both yeah He's gonna go. He's gonna go vote. You should too, guys. Frost by the way, Frost and Sonic Fox. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> don't, don't just listen to his takes. Have your own say in www.esportsawards.com to have your vote. Efto, thank you so much for joining me once again oh, yeah. to discuss all of our finalists because it's going to be an amazing year. And you're going to be. Oh wait, you're not joining us. I'm this not. I'm he's not, not joining us this I'm year. Not. I got to do dream hack. You got to do dream hack. Yeah. 
Maybe next time? Maybe. Hey, this is this is why you could be on the list of esports caster of the year. You've got to do your thing. So. I mean, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I don't know if I'm going to make it up there. <laughs> Absolutely. But. Well, talking about he's obviously, Tom isn't going to be here with us, but you guys actually can be there with us as well. You have a chance to be in this very room in November and joining us for the esports awards 2019. There's a few tickets remaining, so go over right now, www.esportsawards forward slash tickets to go and buy yours. And there's a few VIPs left too. I think you'd be a VIP if you were here. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. That's me. Very important. <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah, people. Plural? Really? That's where you're going to go? That is where I'm going to go. No. Another place I'm going to go now is to go and get my friend Mike Castro yeah. is going to be joining us right after this break to talk about the eSports Awards and what he's been up to. Ladies and gents, welcome back from the break. And as you can see, I have a friendly new face with me. Joining me, I have a veteran of the esports industry, a truly renowned name here. I've got CEO of Team Envy, Mike Hastro Rafael. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, First of, of all, it's lovely to see you in Dallas here. Um, 
and just going to start with some really exciting news about the Call of Duty League that we're having. And I'm sure that you're super excited to be part of it as well with Team MV going into the franchising. What does it mean for you guys to be involved? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Dallas has been an incredible city for me my entire life because I grew up in Texas. I was uh, born and raised in East Texas. So uh, obviously having the, the first chance at starting up a uh, kind of permanent position team in the Overwatch League with the Dallas Fuel was really important to me. And this is no different. Uh, being able to go ahead and have ownership of the Call of Duty franchise and the uh, upcoming Call of Duty League we are extremely excited about that. It's, it means a lot to me personally because of my roots here in Texas and this is my home and um, it's really just super special that we get to have both those teams here in Dallas. 100%. And I mean, of course, it is obviously a very personal thing for you living in Dallas, breathing Dallas air and then having obviously that, that spot in the Call of Duty League as well. Are you excited in terms of what's going to be happening for the franchising across the, the, the six months that the season's going to hold? Yeah, I mean, we were we're the oldest competing organization in all of Call of Duty esports, um, and you know, for us to head into something that's more structured and more formalized, there's a lot more opportunity for us to really go out and grow a brand and grow a team. And uh, I think it's just a more stable kind of career for the players as well. And so there are a lot of great things that come with organization, you know. And nobody can really ever argue that being more organized is a is a, is a terrible thing. I think it's it's going to be very additive to what Call of Duty Esports has been for, for many, many years. And, um, you know, the, the more formal things built around it are going to just benefit everybody, including the fans who love to watch it too. So really excited about it. And talking about adding on to, how does this new achievement add on to what you guys are really doing with Dallas Fuel? Yeah, I mean, it, just, it's, uh, it kind of just layers on another... Uh, you know, bonus, I would say, for us because we're already having to do all these things like hold home games and have these awesome events for the fans here in Dallas locally and anybody else from around the world who wants to fly in to, to support our team or, you know, the competitors that we have coming to play against us. So uh, adding in that extra Call of Duty team, it's just a big, big bonus to us because uh, we're already doing this in the Overwatch League and now we can kind of do what we do best there and, and apply that to Call of Duty and make all of our events just a really amazing experience. I mean, that's what we're in the business of, in my opinion. It's about creating experiences and entertainment for people and letting them have fun and enjoy uh, what we do with us. So it's a big, big family for us, including all of our fans. And I can't wait to, you know, meet more of the fans that are here local in Dallas. And the first event we had in April for the Overwatch League, that was the first ever home game in esports history. It was incredible, uh, just an amazing turnout. and me just mingling with some of the people there. And now I, I understand that I'm not flying around the world like I used to, uh, creating some of these relationships with fans. Now I actually am doing it in my backyard and I'm able to meet people who will be buying tickets with us for many, many years and coming to watch our games and supporting us with their families. And that to me is uh, so, so special. You can't, can't really put a value on it. Exactly, and you've mentioned so many times their family, and that's really what this new franchise model comes down to, is creating that atmosphere that you can support your home team, you mm. can support where you're from, you can get behind it. And we see that a lot in traditional sport as well, and having that new addition, that new model coming in, what do you reckon that's gonna do for the community? Uh, yeah, I mean, one, it's accessibility, right? Like, we, we for the past, 13 years in Call of Duty Esports, we've been traveling to cities, you know, around the world. Um, and, you know, a lot of the cities didn't get a lot of that access, right? You would, if you lived in Minnesota, who now has a team, you would have to go, you know, God knows how far to go to a Call of Duty event. Uh, Seattle, you know, we didn't really have too many stops there. So now you have these home, home teams that are based there. And to go watch the best Call of Duty players in the world, you can you know, maybe drive 10 minutes away from your house and, and go watch it at the arena. So uh, the accessibility part is a big part of it. Uh, more cities getting involved as we grow the league is going to be crucial and, and more people can enjoy Call of Duty Esports in their own backyard instead of just watching, you know, on streams or uh, having to fly somewhere. For so sure. I think, huge. yeah, it's, it is going to be huge. The fact that people, like you said, can literally walk out and be like, oh, there's a game this weekend? Sick. Like, yeah. cannot wait. It's coming here. Awesome. Yeah. And that's going to be a massive transition, I think, for Call of Duty going, going forward yeah. as well. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot here because obviously okay. Team MV <laughs> have had numerous successes across the years mm -hmm. and are also involved in so many different esports. You have teams here, there, everywhere. Which one is your favorite? Uh, which is my favorite team? <laughs> uh, all time or? All time. 
uh, I mean, obviously, Call of Duty is, you know, those are my roots. So if I had to pick a favorite game to be involved in, it's definitely been Call of Duty because we, you know, that's where I started. I played professionally. I casted the events. I was a broadcaster. I, you know, advised some of the esports features in the game. I mean, it's just been, Call of Duty is like ingrained in my blood. Um, so Call of Duty has always been my favorite, you know, because it's just what I helped grow. Um, but, you know, I also really enjoy my time traveling around the, around the world with our Counter-Strike team. I think that experience was uh, crucial and it kind of shaped who I am today as a team owner. So I uh, really enjoyed the, all the professional players in the Counter-Strike scene and um, just seeing that whole scene kind of grow up and, and become essentially what is the most watched esports in, or esport in the world right now, uh, just for the sheer volume of tournaments and events that, that go on there. But so Call of Duty is close to home. Counter-Strike I love and you know Overwatch was just something that we got into recently I think over time that's gonna be something I really enjoy to do I too. see it I see it Mike you're an FPS guy at heart yeah I, I see am it. I know yeah it's, it's <laughs> tough I, I don't really diversify too much away from it so hey yeah. if you found it you found it if that's what you love it's yeah, what you love yeah. you know we're not gonna question it here yep. um, now talking about the esports awards of course we're here in the venue the very venue that's gonna happen in November for the esports awards 2019 um, you guys team MV took the team of the year award back in 2016 and you were actually there on the night to collect it now I'm sure there have been multiple achievements since then that have just been stacking up on top of that one as well talk to me about some of the big things that you guys have had since back in 2016 yeah so in 2016 I, I feel like it was well deserved hopefully everybody <laughs> agrees I mean that year we just went on you know a spree of winning championships and um, in multiple games too which was incredible I think we had three or four games that we won championships in that year uh, I think a couple of world championships that year and, and a couple different games so uh, we, from that point on, um, it's been nothing but building infrastructure for us, I would say. We, we spent a lot of time focused on the business side of things and preparing to lay the foundation for the future, which we're kind of coming out of now. So for the past two years, it's been building the business infrastructure more so than it has been, um, you know, going out and making sure that every single one of our teams are winning championships. But when, once we lay that foundation, now we're able to kind of go back out and invest more in our players and invest more in talent. Uh, we obviously were still very competitive over the last couple of years. I'd say one of the biggest achievements for us over the past two years since we won eSports Team of the Year was just executing the top of class home eSports event that we did in April with our Overwatch League team. And we managed to win both those games, including a big win over the Houston team, uh, which is our biggest rival in the Overwatch League. And so we did that in front of the Texas crowd that was here. They had plenty of fans that drove up from Houston to come support the Houston Outlaws. And uh, we put on an amazing event. Um, won both the games there. The crowd was insanely hyped up. I mean, to have almost 5,000 people each day, a sold out crowd a month ahead of, in advance. That, that was probably our biggest achievement is winning those two games competitively in, in front of a massive home crowd like that. And now we've kind of proven that we can put on an, an awesome, amazing show for the fans here in Dallas. So, Absolutely. And yeah, you know, biggest we, achievement it, by it, far. It is huge. And what you what you have done with Team Envy is is massive. And we went back in time to 2016, but going right back at the beginning as well of your journey. Now, obviously, you're, you're a dad now, which yeah. is amazing and, you know, incredible stuff. But do you also look at Team Envy as the father? Do you look at them as a proud parent? And when you do achieve some of these huge things and accomplish such amazing feats, do you look at that and think, you know what, I see this as, as my baby? Yeah, it's always been that way. Yeah, and, and you know, being a husband and a, and a father now, I mean, it's, it's really uh, taken just some of the principles I learned as having family before I had my own family. Uh, my players were always my family, my, you know, uh, staff and the people who work with me are always have always been family to me and um, yeah I mean I think that's very core to what I do even subconsciously it's you know I'm, I'm all about making sure that people I work with or people I engage with every day feel like they're family and uh, hopefully everybody that has ever crossed my path and ha have, have, has had to work with me uh, feels like they're part of my family because they definitely are and uh, I want the fans to also feel that way when, when we start holding more events here in Dallas. Absolutely. I think I definitely think they will, especially with the franchise coming into. They really do have that family feel and a reunion every time it comes around. So that's really yeah. nice as well. Yeah. Um, and talking about family, you really have been rallying a cry for Corey Doggett. And I just want to know for you, yeah. you know, there's no doubting the quality of his work and his craftsmanship, uh, but what makes him to you so special? Why, why does he stand such a high chance this 2019? Uh, Corey is, so he's up for a video, videographer of the year. 
he's been working with me for a long time. And Corey is absolutely one of those people that I consider family, right? Um, what makes him so special is that when he starts a project, uh, he will not sleep, will not stop working on it until it is absolutely perfect. And he does, he has a, a style where he, he really manages to capture the emotion of a player uh, in full without that player ever having to evoke it in themselves. And it's kind of hard to understand and hard to explain, but uh, basically he, he understands who these players are that play for our organization and basically creates this video content that shows who they truly are. Uh, because a lot of times players are in front of a camera or on a stage and you don't really understand you know, what goes through their head and you know, the emotions that they feel. And Corey brings that out of the player and puts it in the video. And, and um, I think that makes him the absolute best videographer in the world. And I think he should win this. So. I like that. Yeah. Uh, see, Corey, he's he's got you back, man. He's got, <laughs> there's nothing more I can say. He's got you back. It's he not thinks even having his back. It's just true, the truth, you know. So, Corey, it's the truth. There You're we doing go. a great job, I like man. it. I like it a lot. <laughs> and, and talking about yourself and Corey, are you guys going to be attending this year's awards? Uh, I believe I will be attending. Uh, I know I have to travel out the next day, but um, I should be there. And I, I know Corey will be in attendance. So I'm, I'm pretty positive both of us will be around. That will be amazing. Well, Mike, yeah. thank you so much for all of your time. And it was fantastic to catch up with you, oh, thank you. on all of the achievements for this year. Thanks. Uh, um, I mean, next year. I, I can't wait to talk again because I'm sure there's going to be even better ones. So. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you so all right, much. Thanks, Lady. Take care. We are giving you guys the opportunity to win a dream VIP package to be here at the Esports Awards 2019 hosted by Arlington, courtesy of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. All you have to do is go over to our website and vote on Personality and Streamer of the Year Awards and you could be right here in the beautiful Arlington, Texas. Well, it's been a little while since I saw you last in our show in Atlanta. Yeah. And I have a lot to catch up on with you because I've missed you, man. Word. I've I missed feel that. you. So while I'm having a chat with F Dot, I want you guys to take a look at what Tommy T Triple Nine has in store. He's gonna be going through the big one that you guys have been waiting for. Twelve plays have made it, winning their respective play of the month. We have so much to talk about. Will it be Mr. November winning it this year? Will it be Mr. March? Or maybe it'll be Mr. June but we are going to be finding out in November. So let's take it over to Tommy T Triple Nine with your finalists for the Esports Play of the Year. What a round from here! What the hell did we just see? Oh my god, that damn it! Can you Wait. show me more? Oh, it's going to end the game. Whoa. The kill! Esports Play of the Year, the ball goes to. Hey there, everyone, the time has finally arrived. My name is Tommy T. Nine, and these are the Esports Awards Plays of the Year. Over the past year, we have seen plays from all corners of esports face off in their respective months, all of them having the opportunity to make it through to this, the Esports Play of the Year vote. Every play you're about to see has made it to this point for one reason, and for one reason only, and that is because you placed your votes at www.esportsawards.com, and now they're in with a chance of becoming the Play of the Year. So without any further ado, Let's unveil the 2019 Esports Awards Play of the Year finalists. Woxic, formerly of Hellraisers, now playing for Mouse Sports. Winning the October Play of the Month, this play sees an incredible ace from Woxic in a matchup between Na'Vi and Hellraisers from Epicenter 2018. Woxic's got off to, he's gonna peek off truck, nails the closest player, still the bomb's been planted and Bondix dropped, but Woxic still stands and he stands tall on 20 HP. Calling for the rotate upwards, Zeus? With a headshot into Dead Fox, the moment he rounds the dumpster, but this is on Woxic. Four kills already, looking to close map two on the ace. He taps the bomb, sees the shoulder, and Flaney's <laughs> down for the count. It is Hellraisers moving to... Squishy for Cloud9. The November Play of the Month winner is from the RLCS Season 6 Grand Final 
between Cloud9 and Dignitas, and it features an insane flip reset from Squishy. Laxing, formerly of Cloud9, now playing for Team Reciprocity. Winning the December Play of the Month, Laxing pulls out a mouth-watering ace at the United States Nationals against Elephant Gang to secure the match for his team. They're trying to get everyone back off of the ground. Tripp going to find one of his own, immediately reflagged by Laxing. Cloud9 playing this to a T right now on these trades. And oh my goodness, Avian going to peek out as well. And is Laxing going to go massive? Oh my goodness, Cloud9! No overtime at all for this matchup right here. Caps for G2 Esports. January's Play of the Month saw Caps pick a fight with XL Esports players in an effort to prevent the Baron from being taken. With a carefully navigated retreat, Caps is able to position himself perfectly and picks off two XL Esports players in the process. Sexy Cake for Team Liquid. Winning February's Play of the Month, Sexy Cake found himself in a 1 versus 3 situation, but he turns on a style, rotating through two rooms and picking off his opponents to seal the win for Team Liquid. He's gonna find one, and he's gonna find two! Liquid to the main stage, ladies and gentlemen, as an exclamation point will be put down for the Brazilians, the only Brazilian team to make it to the main stage. Oh my goodness. And it's Sexy Cake to close out just like we saw. The Fran for Atlanta Reign. Overwatch League action won the March Play of the Month, and this play will be on many highlight reels to come. For its sheer inventive brilliance, the Fran manages to climb onto the roof before leaping off and grabbing all six members of Paris Eternal. Simple for Na'Vi. Your April Play of the Month sees the 2018 Esports Awards PC Player of the Year Simple of Na'Vi in a 1 vs 4 situation and doing what he is renowned for. Simple takes down all four NRG players in a truly stunning display of spray control. That transfer on the third and Simple hit Cirque as well? No way he hit that third shot. That makes up for it. Well, too little too late is that we'll get the defuse through. NRG will take the round, but only just. Young for evil geniuses. The May play of the month features Young in a 1 vs 4 situation against a formidable FaZe Clan team. Picking up three sublime kills, Young carefully navigates his way to the final member of FaZe Clan, springing out and claiming that final kill. What was? TJ Halley for Optic Gaming. Winning June's Play of the Month was a truly incredible play from Call of Duty, as TJ Halley goes huge in this game amassing a 10 kill streak whilst defending the zone for Optic Gaming. Finding kills that are insane to see, and even gets an EKIA for the next one. He's on a 10 spree, no one on Heretics has 10 kills. No one else in the lobby. Device for Astralis. July's winner is from the semi-finals of ESL1 Cologne, and it sees Device secure an AWP ace, which included shooting Alex in mid-air and naming both RPK and Apex with just one shot. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! He takes every single one from nothing to the AWP ace! Simp for E United. The winning play from August features action from CWL, and Simp knocks off three units players to put E United firmly in control and keep the pressure on for his teammates to pick up the remaining two kills 
and seal the round. Uh -oh. ah! Control. Misha for Team Secret. The wildcard entry for this year's Play of the Year sees Nisha of Team Secret at the Chongqing Major go on an absolute tear-up, sealing a triple rampage in the process that sends the casters and the audience into an incredible frenzy. will be there on the Phantom Assassin. Zai wants to help by being standing a little bit further away. He's ultra-killing so hard. Now he jumps back down again. Overwatch the Beastmaster. Continue the stunts all you want, but Satanic is just great. So is the Raw, but PA, the War Stomp. Wait, really? The Creep is delaying? this fight and now Nisha goes on a rampage it's unbelievable the phantom assassin assassins are meant to be stealthy he's in your face he's the real roar of this game BKB to dodge the storm ball. a double rampage Nisha doing solo give me a triple rampage you're gonna get it a stun it's only delaying the inevitable it's a triple rampage for Nisha unbelievable So there you have it, that is your eSports Play of the Year 2019 Grand Final. 12 incredible moments, 12 plays that are now all vying for your votes, but who will be the eSports Awards Play of the Year? Well it's entirely up to you. So make sure you go and vote for your favourite, whether you prefer aces, clutches, comebacks or championship deciding plays, you need to head on over to www.esportsawards.com and cast your vote. If you haven't already done so, make sure you cast your votes for all of your Esports Awards categories as well, and congratulations to all of our finalists for making it this far. My name is Tommy T. Triple Remember to like and share, hit the subscribe button, and of course, this has been your 2019 Esports Awards Player of the Year Grand Final. Well, there you have it, all of your incredible play of the year finalists and very well deserved to be in there because yeah. some of those clips are pretty impressive. I mean, those are the plays that make the greats the great and the goods just kind of okay. And me look absolutely terrible. And that's why we talk about it, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm super excited for that award this year, actually. It's one of my favorite. I know it's one of our, our MD's favorite, Michael Ashford, as well, because it's very special. It goes on all year round. They're chosen specifically through the months, and it's super exciting. I'm, I, can't, I hope it's a February month for me. I mean, that's the, that's the lifeblood. We're here, like, talking about commentators, and this is who's the best, what is the coolest gameplay moment? Like, yeah, that's why we're here, right? You know, so Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm talking I'm about why we're here, you're not going to be here in November. I'm not. I'm not. It's got better things to do, people. Please just rub it in over and over again. I'm very excited to not, thanks. However, something that is super cool is you guys at home could actually be in this very room in November joining us for the awards. Huh. It's super easy. All you have to do is go over to our website, esportsawards.com com forward slash tickets to pick yours up. There's plenty of tickets still left. A couple of VIPs as well if you really do want to be that bougie. I know you'd pick up a VIP That's you. Ticket. That's your style. I try. I'm chilling from the I city. Try. But you can have a chance to be in this very room and watch it live for yourself. Well, Eftor, I'm actually going to just chill here for a bit, uh, but you need to go grab an Uber now because you're off to the GameStop Performance Center. Right. Have a look around. Yeah, no, now it's my time to rub it into you. This is a dope, state-of-the-art facility. I'm going to get on my way out with a little bit of gamer magic. Um, what just happened? Can someone tell me what just happened? Hey, what's good, folks? Tom Badinger here at the headquarters of Complexity, the GameStop Performance Center. Mr. Jason Lake told me anybody could just walk in and open this door. I'm gonna test it out. Here goes nothing. We're in.
Well, first mission success. First of all, you made it in. Yeah, you told me anybody can walk in. <laughs> That's right. Even me, and we got in here. So let's do the second time. Hello, nice to meet you. Yeah, formally. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the GameStop Performance Center, home of Complexity Gaming. We're yeah. happy to have you here. Yeah, no, thank you. I am thrilled to be here. Let's, uh, I mean, help. Let's start here. This is uh, the yeah. anyone can enter spot, right? Yeah, this is our public space. We're open seven days a week. Um, it was really important to us to have a space where our fans could come in, play some games. Uh, maybe watch some games and just kind of uh, you know experience esports. We've got a mobile gaming bar, um, free laptops and, and PCs by MSI and Nvidia cards all set up. We've got some cool uh, stadium seats where kids are allowed to sit on the furniture, all right, <laughs> and uh, watch our matches when they're on. They can pick up some merch and, and watch whoever's streaming in our studio and, and just experience the, the complexity way of life and be part of the family. So. It's really nice having having a public space where, where anyone can come visit us. And we've already had some really cool experiences where people come in like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's complex. So it's it sick. makes you feel cool. And uh, you know, it, it's something really special about our headquarters. We're really proud of it. I feel like you're talking about me and coming in, oh my God, it's complexity. Yeah, kids I, like I, you I, come I, in all the time. <laughs> I mean, you laugh, real talk, I kind of <laughs> did that. This is sick. But it's also, it feels home. Like this feels comfortable. And don't yeah. get me wrong, this is much nicer than anything I could call home. Yeah. But also it's chilling. Like there's beanbag chairs. Like yeah. this is me we, as a gamer. We, we definitely wanted a techie home feeling. Like you got the leather couches and we could pop on some esports. Not every living room has a gigantic LED ribbon <laughs> in. Uh, but you know, you know, in esports you gotta go big sometimes. And uh, you know, we set it up carbon fiber table and, and bar for the kids and uh, we think a lot of our fans will enjoy coming to visit. So by all means, you know, stop by and see us. We're open seven days a week. That's the coolest part. You know, I'm sure you, well, we know you've got a whole bunch of other like science-y stuff for the I players I gotta show you backstage. what's in the back though. That's really the cool stuff. But I, I mean, this I is where it's built. Fun. This is community. This, this is, is it. This is what we do, right? Community this is, is the heart of gaming. Community is the heart of esports. And uh, we're really happy to have this space for our fans. This is sick. Community can come in and do what they want. They can watch the players. Let's go take a look at what the players do to get up there. All right, let's check it out. Hey, what's good, guys? Tom here with Mr. Jason Lake one more time, and we are in the... Mind Gym. Mind A gym, gym for the mind. Now, that's next level. Uh, Question based level. What, what, what is a mind gym? Well, our athletes, um, you know, have their physical fitness taken care of across the street, like we talked about in the interview uh, at Cowboys Fit, but we wanted to develop an innovative space for the mind. This sure. is where our performance coach works. Now, we put a rubber floor in so we can do low impact stretching and aerobics, and we've got different gear over here for massaging and, and you know, health and fitness. But the most in intriguing thing that I think we've put in is a specialized system that's made by Mamba Sports Academy. Mamba okay. Sports Academy is Kobe Bryant's sports yeah. institute out of California. And what these iPads do is it has proprietary software that we're always updating. Um, it, it tests twitch, reaction speed, color pattern recognition. It's a way of warming up your optic nerves and the synopsis in your brain. You know, in football we have a 40 yard dash so we can kind of measure different skill sets. In esports we really don't. Mm. We're trying to develop a system where we can test how fast are gamers outside of their game. What's really interesting is some of the 12 and 13 year olds we test, test just as fast as some of the pro gamers and, it, and it's pretty interesting to see. We're also testing, you know, before an athlete warms, or before an athlete plays an event, they always do a warm up. Yeah. But esports we might hop in our game for a minute and then, and then we go live. We're, we're doing a lot of research that suggests that warming up outside of the game with equipment like this is actually the best way forward. Yeah, when it comes down to it, like you said, we've got warm-ups, we've got drills in traditional sports. Exactly. I can make you run wind sprints till your shins kill you. And I don't necessarily have that in esports unless I've got a mind gym. Exactly. So is it, we're always you know, tweaking the software and figuring out what works best as part of our innovation. Sure. And, and a big part of the mind gym and the entire GSPC is really based around innovation. I'm not interested in building a facility or an esports team for today. I'm, I'm interested in building a facility and an esports team for tomorrow. So everything that we built into the GameStop Performance Center is meant to do that. Um, this space will constantly be evolving and we always want to be at the cutting edge of performance. Makes sense. I mean, with everything on the line, that's that's kind of what we want to hear. I think I'm going to jump into this and test myself. Yeah, we'll give you a shot, see how fast yeah, you are. I'm uh, going to lose, but we'll figure it out for sure. Just a little 
bit of a different tone. Everything seems yeah. to be about like... Yeah, the piano music? Yeah, everything, I, I feel like I've got to whisper a little bit. We are in the, right. the, the walkway of serenity. What's the your name for it? Is, yeah, the decompression port. Okay. You know, as when we took a look at the holistic life and well-being of our players, um, mental health and relaxation, proper sleep, proper nutrition, proper preventative medical care, all those things. Um, and we saw this space, we're like, we want to have a place where they can just chill out. Yeah. And that's what this is. We want a lot of open light, and you can see our sports hospital yeah, look over at there. Across, that's outside. These are all real plants, so you know you get that fresh vibe, and it's just kind of a place to chill. You can wear some Normatec boots, um, which squeeze your legs and get really good <laughs> circulation. You know, Before you warm up, uh, you can do some massaging on your arm with some of the equipment we have here and uh, just kind of chill out and, and, and listen to music and, and either come down from a rough practice or, or just kind of get in that zen mode before you go to practice. Yeah, it definitely feels like a cut away from the real like twitch reactions, work, work, work. Right. You gotta right. have you need a balance. A, and balance and we, we do coach balance, we preach balance. And uh, you know, I guess the cherry on top of this area is what we call our nap pod. Yeah. It looks like something out of Star Trek, but you put these headphones on, it has relaxing music. Uh, it tilts back, gives you a back massage, and then you close this and uh, oh. take a nap at work. You can't beat that. You absolutely can't. Um, you gonna try it out? Uh, no, I'm gonna keep working. We're gonna keep walking <laughs> that way. I got, I'll meet up with you in, in, in a minute though. Okay? All right. Energy pod activated. Gonna give you a back rub. Enjoy your, okay. You hear the music? I do hear the music. Is it peaceful? This is peaceful. All right, now you're off to nap. <laughs> Nap at work. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> this is actually really sick. This is how I want to relax nah, it'll after put you out doing the day. anything. Uh, I, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. If I stay here for too much longer, I'm just gonna be out. So uh, you guys can finish it without me. Potatoes, right? This is the training That's room. It. Everything kind of surrounds this the training is the, facility. The heart of the facility. Yeah. You know, um, this area was designed specifically for pro gamers that have to perform on big stages around the world. And uh, come in, I'll give you a sneak peek. Let's check it out. So now we're inside one of our training rooms, and these training rooms were designed and built to perfectly replicate what it's like to play on a big stage in esports. We put a lot of thought into these rooms from the Herman Miller chairs that provide the best spinal alignment These to sit-stand desks so we can match the height de desk for wherever they're going. That's, yeah, all this seems really cool, but here, here's the thing, I mean, this is a nice, brightly lit office space. I mean, this isn't what it's like on well, stage. There's a lot of distractions when you're on stage. Each room has its own thermostat, so for instance, if the team's gonna play in India soon, we'd make it kind of warmer before they go to That's the crazy. event. We also have a custom sound where we can pump in audience noise. <laughs> and we can add light distractions if they're on an open stage with unpredictable lighting systems. <laughs> See, this is what I was talking about. This, like, this is more welcome to the major. So like, you've got is... distracting lights, you've got distracting audio, but you have to focus in your game. We've got a glass wall, which is what a lot of the, the pods look like in eSports. Mm. And uh, we wanted to make sure we could replicate what it's like to gain that fraction of a second, to gain that performance, and uh, eventually lift trophies. I mean, we think they're the most advanced training rooms in the world. Uh, probably. I want to say yes, but <laughs> somebody, you know. But this is, I mean, I, I'm on stage doing eSports for a living. I do play-by-play, right. play, and I can't tell you how many threads I've followed of, all right, this kid is crushing in the online league. How are exactly. you gonna do on land? This, you don't remove that aspect, but you certainly minimize 100%. it. 100%. Which and is the goal of the whole thing. And I think a lot of people watching at home don't realize how much more difficult it is to do it on oh, a stage yeah. from you know your, your bedroom at home. And this is to help us prepare um, gamers and properly train them to make it as realistic as you can without uh, having an actual audience in the building. And the cool thing is that's one-way glass, so the old man uh, boss AKA me can, can stand over there and watch them practice yeah. uh, without distracting them. So we're proud of our training rooms and, and think a lot of other teams will probably emulate them in the future. And uh, we're just happy to be on the cutting edge. Yeah, no, I think this is sick. You've got a number of different setups. I even, I see a little mobile setup as well. We an eye on mobile yeah. gaming. And mobile kind of setups and uh, a setup for the coach. And yeah. 
just gonna get our gamers in here and so far they've loved it and uh, we believe this investment in infrastructure over time is uh, gonna prove to very successful. I don't I don't see a world where it's not. Like I said, I mean, this is literally, you, you've taken half of my, my commentary out of it because she's got the, 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 the setup. This is fantastic uh, and I think it's really a testament to what this place represents. It really is about minimizing the amount of friction going into big events. This is really sick. Yeah, I now you can sit down, down that one. sit down and uh, get to work. You finished up in the mind gym, so. Oh uh, yeah. You gotta get you warmed up. There it is, and get surprised. Let's go. That's it. Four. Hey, what's good, folks? Tom Badger here, FDOT. But where is here? We're at the GameStop Performance Center, home of Complexity Gaming. And of course, we got the CEO, founder, the father of Complexity Gaming, Mr. Jason Lake, and Sean Doe, one of our finalists here for Videographer of the Year. Obviously, very close to heart, uh, to Complexity. So first off, I mean, we're gonna ask you a couple of questions. The most important one, how y'all doing today? Doing well. Beautiful day. It's finally below 95 degrees here in Texas, <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, the heat has been a little nuts, but it's fitting. You guys are a hot team and it's working out. As I said, we're here at GameStop Performance Center. It's a big deal. Let's let's cut right to uh, the mission statement here. You know, sure. nurturing players, nurturing the esports scene. How important is that to you in complexity to kind of like drive that? Yeah, I think it's incredibly important. Um, you know, for 16 years, we've really um, focused on player development and being able to identify talent, develop that talent. And the GameStop Performance Center is kind of a culmination uh, of, of a lot of ideals we've had around player care and player performance and really being first in class. I think what we've built here um, collectively is pretty special and it's focused around um, you know really seeing a player from a holistic viewpoint. Um, everything from mental health to physical health to nutrition to proper medicine to innovation and uh, there's a, a lot of thought that's gone into uh, the GSPC. Yeah, you've always been kind of, you know, going history with complexity. Players first, that's always been a big part of what's going on here with the organization. You touched on a lot of things, what goes on here at GameStop Performance Center. Talk to me about, let's go into the nitty gritty. Sure. How do you kind of touch upon those different hits? Oh man, <clears throat> how long do you have? <laughs> John and I could talk for, for a, a good while. The floor is yours. Um, you know, our mantra is really what I call esports 3.0. Um, Esports 1.0, gamers lived in mom's basement and traveled once or twice a year. Esports 2.0 was the entire um, team house phenomenon. We actually opened America's first team house, I think it was in 2005, ironically just down the street from here <laughs> in Plano, not knowing we'd be back here all these years later. Um, you know, but team houses, while teams could get better, presented a lot of challenges, um, and I don't think it was really a healthy place to live with your coworkers, right? Yeah. Um, so what we built out here is what we consider to be a next generation esports e platform. Our gamers live in luxury apartments about a mile from here. They get breakfast and lunch at the Dallas Cowboys training table right here on the property, so the nutrition is looked after, or they're right beside the Cowboys players. Um, they have free gym membership here on the property to a really nice gym called Cowboys Fit. Um, with a Sports hospital literally across the street, you can see from here, um, for preventative medical care, care and any reactive medical care. And then you actually enter the GSPC, um, which we spent a year designing to really be um, the next generation of team headquarters. Not only do we have a whole public area um, where we can welcome our fans to come in and buy merch and play video games with us, uh, we've put a tremendous amount of thought into the facility itself. Our training rooms are high-tech, cutting-edge performance. Um, we have a room called the Mind Gym. I've um, heard about this. Which is, you know, a whole conversation in <laughs> itself. It's focusing on the cognitive development of our players and what what can we do to get that fraction of a second out of any esports player. Um, you know, the difference between winning and losing. Um, we've got our area called the Innovation Lab where we've got a lot of neat things going on. Everything from around furniture and, and spinal alignment. And you know, if you're gonna sit for long hours of play, let's do it right. We're developing new sets of desks that place less torque on the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder for healthier gamers. We have chairs, um, like I said, for better spinal alignment, for, for better blood flow and other things. We've got a lot of recovery tech um, in the HQ. So in many ways, the HQ actually resembles more of what a traditional sports team would do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Except in a digital 
esports type of flair. We have a classroom with a 98 inch touch screen so we can go over our demos and draw on the screen instead of everyone hunching over the, <laughs> the in-game leader's monitor. Um, and then, you know, what we have sitting here is the Miller Lite Player Lounge where they can come together and, and just kind of relax and get a coffee or a drink and enjoy esports on our big screens and, uh, you know, kind of just be part of the family. Um, so like I said earlier, we spent a year designing the facility and a half a year building it. And it was really the focus when, when we got our investment with the Cowboys organization and with the Goff family. We, we're thinking long term. Uh, I think there's a lot of FOMO, fear of missing out in our business, particularly around how some of the teams have raised and some of the decisions they've made and some of the investments they've made. Um, we like to think we have a little longer term outlook on the space. And we wanted to first focus on infrastructure to really just build the world's best place for any pro gamer to play. And I think we've done that, um, and we're pretty proud of it. Yeah, I mean, you should be. You talked about, you know, I've always <clears throat> talked about esports in, in kind of the waves, first wave, second wave, third yeah. wave, just like you said, 1.0, et cetera. And, you know, as we watch traditional sports, more money comes in. Uh, when they started playing when they started playing football, there was a coach. Yeah. Now you've got an offensive right, coordinator, yeah. or defense, right? And that's all just because more money comes in. Yeah. And so you're able to kind of look and turn that around. And like you said, all these, from the chairs to the desks, it all, I got a chance to walk and around. And that's a quick place. version, to be honest with you. <laughs> we put a ton of thought in. And every Everything from like Sean and his content team, um, you know, little things. We have video editing bays over there and fiber optic lines to the main server. So when they're transferring large files for our content production, it's just that much faster. So, you know, we, we spent a lot of time and uh, tried to make it obviously focused on the gamers, but we mm -hmm. also wanted it to be the best place to produce content. We wanted it to be the best place to work. All our desks back there are sit Stan Herman Miller furniture, so wow. even, you know, the accountant gets a <laughs> gets a comfortable chair and desk. So. Well, I mean, that's cool. You, you've got, obviously, the approach with the players in mind, uh, mm -hmm. the people backstage, but also something you mentioned earlier, there's a public area where people can come in and just like, yeah. it's the same place that these players train at, I can just walk in and buy a hoodie. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when, you, when you're designing a, a team facility like this, you have to take into account certain things so you'll study other facilities that have like a full kitchen mm -hmm. we were blessed to have the Cowboys training table across the street so we could just do a kitchenette and that bought us some space um, while we do have a small studio in the front of, of the headquarters we have a full TV studio and a full podcast studio across the street so wow. we could get by with this small studio and what that had a lot of what that enabled us to do was a lot of you know a good amount of space as our public space um, it was important to us that our fans could just come off the street or when they come to visit the Cowboys um, empire, they could get a little esports in their life. And uh, as a way for connecting with our fans, there's about 2 million people that visit this property a year. And, um, you know, partner with GameStop, we wanted to make sure they could come in, play some video games, watch a giant video wall and uh, enjoy our world. I mean, that's, that's you, you've been in there for as long as uh, the red tie, right? I mean, it's community. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's what yeah, esports sure. is. That's the basis of all of it, you bet. It's cool, though. I mean, you're, 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 you're saying all the right things, but also there's a, a mutual respect, it seems. You know, we come down here, Cowboys way, and I see all the cowboy stuff, and complexity is just a part of it. There's no, like yeah. you said, it's not just a patch on the side. You guys are in here, and there's a respect from the Cowboys as well. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, that have followed us, you know, for over a decade, we're a little unhappy when we changed the red and black to, to the blue and, and the new logo that sure. Cam and his team um, really worked hard on. But once you come here and spend any time around us, I think you realize, like, this was a no-brainer. Yeah. Like, we want to be a part of this corporate family. This brand is, is worldwide famous, and I think attaching ourselves to it in some way and being a sister company was... Like I said, an absolute no-brainer. And it, it's been kind of uh, enjoyable for me to bring a digital kind of sport into the world of traditional sports because a lot of times they'll come over and they'll be like, how are you guys doing this? Yeah. They won't be like, well, dot, 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 dot. Because we were born in the internet. We were born, you know, bred on the internet. That's that's where the world of esports comes from. But a lot of traditional sports, I think, are still trying to catch up. Like, how do we speak to this audience? What's the most efficient way of using modern technology to run all these different parts of our business? Sure. Well, we were kind of forced to do that. Like, okay, <laughs> we don't have mo any money, so what's the, mo what's the best <laughs> software program to do this for the least amount of cost? And, and we got pretty good at it, you know, being a bootstrap company. So it's definitely been enjoyable working with different parts of the Cowboys organization when they come to us, be like, all right, you guys are the cool digital people. Like, how would you recommend we do this? We're like, 
wow, you want our opinion? <laughs> so there has been a lot of give and take, but we've definitely um, taken more than we've been able to give him. But it's been a fun adventure. Well, who, who do you think is going to be the first complexity athlete? We've seen like other so, athletes jump in and sign. From us different... to them or from, from them from, to us? From, from because if it's us. from us to them, it's definitely going to be Blame F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's <laughs> our new in-game leader <laughs> out of Denmark. He's as big as some of the players over there. The guy is a Goliath. And he's a, he, he, he has a strong routine. And he's like, you know, gym, early morning gym. <laughs> Straight into practice. Straight <laughs> like when he first came over, he he said, uh, like out, off of a, a plane, he was just like, "I'm ready. I'm ready to hit the, yeah. death match." He, just ready. He to landed from the airport, came over here, like we'll let you go and rest. He's like, "No, I want a death match, and then I'm going to the gym." It's like, dude, you just flew all the way from Denmark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love our flight. <laughs> yeah, we love him. He's he's been great. Hey man, it's it's that's what it's built on, right? Exactly. Attitudes like that. That's probably how this relationship kind of is made with just yeah. winning attitude. I don't care if you're winning on the gridiron or the sticks, yeah. you're winning games, right? So it's all fun kind of looking at what complexity has been able to accomplish and obviously winning some awards kind of in that. We're here with yeah. the eSports Awards. Yeah, we're really proud of my guy Sean here. You know, yeah. he travels around the world. Um, what were you gone for, like six weeks? Once, five weeks. Five weeks, one stint this year. It's a lot of travel, it's a lot of work. Oh yeah. He has to accompany the players on you know, an emotional roller coaster. Because when you're doing well, everyone's great, and then as soon as things start to fall apart, it's bad, and then the old man evil boss comes in, <laughs> starts dropping crazy tweets and stuff, and people are depressed or whatever, and he's gotta capture all that, and and, and be close enough to the players to, to, to capture the reality of the situation, but be emotionally distanced enough to be a professional and to be good at his trade. So we're really proud of Sean. Um, and it, his editor Marco for the Through the Smoke series, and we definitely appreciate his nomination. I think he's a, I think he's a great candidate and should win the dang thing. Yeah, I mean, I I watch it. I was a personal fan, insane. Everything you were saying, Mister Lake, talking about like your it's your job to stick a camera in someone's face at their arguably worst moment. So that's, that's a big deal. Absolutely. What did it mean when you learned that you were you were nominated? Oh man, when I was. It was actually here. We watched it on this TV right yeah, behind the camera. We had it live on that big screen. <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! It was it was a really great moment. Um, I I never thought to be nominated for the, the award no. because last last year I was just getting into esports and I I was like oh esports awards that's cool maybe one day I I, I can you know. <laughs> Hopefully get nominated. And a year later, it's like, wow, I am nominated. This is weird. <laughs> and the thing about crazy. Sean is, you know, there's different types of people in our industry, right? And yeah. some people really gloat after this stuff. Some people really pursue these nominations. He's about as humble as it come. He's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen um, in my life. And he just comes to work every day, gives it all he's got. And if it takes till one in the morning to get his job done, that's what he does. If he's got to get on a plane tomorrow and fly to China, that's what he's going to do. He doesn't complain. He's always humble and he works super hard. And it's people like that that I really like to see get these awards and, and really succeed. So uh, I hope he wins it because he's definitely qualified. I mean, you know, that's like what I said about the players. That's what the industry is built on. Blood, sweat, and tears. Now Absolutely. we're making deals with Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> it's crazy, 2000, right? 2007, we yeah. were not in that yeah, world. Yeah. It was, you remember like the eight, nine people crammed in hotel room days. And yeah, uh, it I wasn't swear, always like this. Yeah. Believe me. I swear, it's only three people in here. I can see five people walk in the room. <laughs> no, no, no. And then you win the tournament, right? That's, yeah. how, you, that's how you're able to take yeah, it. That's uh, right. Telling the story, obviously a big part of what we do, what, what I do, hell. And so you've crushed it again. Congratulations on the nomination. Thank you. You know, what, did it, uh, what does it mean to you as a part of complexity? Obviously, there's like a little part. You're very humble and you want to kind of put that aside. Mm -hmm. But as being a part of the team and bringing this like with respect to the, the bigger org, what does that mean to you? It's cool to be part of the legacy of complexity. Uh, when I first joined Complexity, I, I knew them in 2012. Um, I actually knew, knew the GM, the previous GM, uh, Kyle uh, Batista, with, uh, through an old game called Han. Um, <laughs> and so, somehow I connected, reconnected with them five years later. Um, and it's, it's cool being part of uh, just the legacy as a whole because uh, my first two land events uh, with Complexity um, I, I, I got this opportunity to make the first, uh, one of the first uh, frag movies of the Martin Martin days. Uh, if you don't remember what the frag the frag movie of complexity, you know Armageddon and Redemption. Oh yeah, it's a it's a raw 
basically a raw behind the scenes, much like Through the Smoke. Um, but uh, back in the day with no YouTube, and you had to, you know, upload it to a, a website, and people had to physically download the, yeah. the video versus we were watching YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> yep. yep, yep. I remember. I remember finding things on. I mean, odd sites, maybe exactly. you know, even just like, exactly. you know, yeah. oh, I got this link to, d is it a virus? I'm not uh, sure. Right. It's either going to kill my computer <laughs> right. or show me the coolest place uh, that we've seen. I got to see it, though. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's just as big a part of the actual gamers themselves. Right. So, no, it's been it's been awesome kind of looking at this facility. And like I said, Esports Awards, we're, we're kind of neighbors now. We're yeah, going to be doing man. our thing over in Absolutely. Arlington. How cool is it? Is that? I think it's cool. Do you I think th it's cool? I think it's awesome. I'm excited <laughs> to have you guys in town. You know, Dallas has really become kind of the second hub in North America um, after Los Angeles. I think Vegas and a couple other places are, are you know, vying to be that. Sure. But with everything we have going on in Dallas and now the eSports Awards in Dallas, uh, I think we've, we've got a great presence. And the cool thing is, a lot of people don't remember this, but Western eSports was kind of born out of Dallas. You know, back to the old uh, QuakeCon days and mm -hmm. the CPL days, and it's all the Europeans would come to Dallas a couple times a year, CPL summer, CPL winter, and, you know, WSVG um, and things like that. So it's almost like a come full circle to Dallas' big yeah. eSports again. So, uh, yeah, it's great to have you guys in town. I mean, CPL Mill is, like, down the block, right? It's a real right. place, right? <laughs> 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 no, it's sexy and everything here in Texas and Arlington. And, uh, you know, let, let's, uh, let me ask you a personal question real sure. quick. Where do you party? Is there like cool stuff to do around here? <laughs> Where do we go hang out tonight? Well, well, first of all, I've got two kids and a wife and I'm getting old, so I don't party much <laughs> at all anymore. But I hear the young folk like to go to Concrete Cowboy uh, uh, yeah. here at the Star and there's a really good steakhouse over there called D Lincoln Prime. We get that uh, steakhouse address. Yeah, but you know, Dallas I think has this reputation. You know, recently I was over in Europe recruiting players and it was all in the press and da da da. They're like, who the hell would want to move to Dallas? And uh, I don't think Europeans and, and, and other people that aren't from the United States really understand, like, this is a really great place. Yeah. Like, we, yeah, it gets hot in the summer, but, you know, for the most part, you know, there's a lot going on here. And it's a really high quality of life and a really affordable quality of life. You know, everyone knows New York and L.A., you know, and I've li lived in L.A. for nine years, and they're great places. Um, but I think Dallas has a lot more to offer, regardless what age you are. Yeah. But you, I'm the wrong guy to ask about where to party. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said affordable. I'm from New York. I, I'm, I have to mention that I'm no from New York. No state income tax It's part here. of it. But, uh, yeah, that's that's the key. You don't pay <laughs> income tax. That's the key right there. Yeah. Hang tight. We'll be back with Jason and Sean after the short break.
So Sean, um, obviously if I ask you this question, it's gonna be your nomination. What is your highlight of 2019? And let me preface that by saying, you're a videographer. You've got an eye for the storyline, looking at all esports. Aside from your personal endeavors, what do you think has been the moment of esports in 2019? Man, we've been, we've been on the road for 21 weeks this year. Uh, we actually go to California next week um, for e ESL Pro League, um, but I think my my I think my favorite uh, time, I guess, is that five week trip. This recently, uh, it was a Fortnite World Cup to FIFA World Cup mm. or FIFA E World Cup, then into uh, the CS:GO Berlin Major. Um, a lot of great opportunities to to see some a visual, uh, visually to see um, some good uh, works came out of it. Uh, Through Smoke uh, just ended as a season finale, um, and. Just next week we'll we'll restart uh, through smoke as season two, so I can't wait for for that. Hell yeah! Five weeks Fortnite World Cup. It all starts in Queens. Remember that it all starts in New York. <laughs> all right. Big big picture 2019 esports awards. Anything you guys are looking particularly excited for? I'm excited for the the award shows being here. Um, I knew I know last year was somewhere in K. Yes. UK. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Um, I'm glad I don't have to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he could drive down the street. <laughs> 40, 45 minutes away. So, it's, <laughs> but it's. I think it's. I think it's really nice to to see you know everyone, uh, everyone in the industry in, as in one place. Um, uh, all the friends I, I I've made over the years mm -hmm. or over the year, um, just to see everyone in one place. I feel that. How about you? Anything you're excited about? You know, I want to see this guy win a trophy. I think he deserves it. And, uh, you know, I like a lot of the interviews, and I think you guys put on a great show. So I'm interested to see. Awesome. Well, a compliment I will take, and it's all me. You know, the other guys that are back there behind the cameras, <laughs> no, it, it's to me, right? Thank you so much for your time. You Thank you so much for the tour. Uh, that said, I was up front, so a lot of cool merch. That's right. I put it here. Uh-huh. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna propose a trade. Obligatory merch swap. Exactly. Yeah. I give you some of this limited edition eSports award, fantastic swag, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It honestly does look pretty good. It we does. got some cool stuff going on. Like I said, limited edition, only this year. Absolutely. But I want that. You down to trade? You are getting a deal. <laughs> there it is. Man. There you it go, is. Shondo. More merch. Awesome. Over. These are really okay. soft. And I oh think wow, you'll like so they them. are. I, yes. uh, yeah, this is what I'm Ooh. wearing in the plane, and it's about to be hoodie weather <laughs> around here. So your timing is perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. I think so as well. I'm going to go actually uh, make this my own. So again, thank go. you so much for the stuff. Thank I you. I appreciate the hell out of it, and we appreciate you guys. We'll catch you later. Well, I am super jealous, F dot, because that looks like a blast. I'm totally going to be hitting that up in November. I have to see this incredible performance center. But guys, this is the last time you're going to see me now until this special night, where I'm actually going to be taking the stage right behind me here to host the eSports Awards 
I'm so excited and thank you so much for tuning in to all of the pre-shows where we revealed all of the finalists that you guys have been nominating for. But until then, I will see you at this year's eSports Awards. for PC Player of the Year are Alexander Simple Kostilev Kyle Buga Geersdorf Luca Perks Perkovic Peter Yiliang Double Lift Peng Nikolai Device Reds Rasmus Caps Winfer Russell David Twist Van Dolken Nicholas Pengu Moitsen Matthew Super Delisi Jay Sinatra Wan Tapias Mecca Topson Tavitsian 